This is a quick overview of some of JSON-LD's core markup language features. There are a number of features that many developers will find themselves using on a pretty frequent basis in JSON-LD. These features include doing things like uh, object typing or data typing, uh, using JSON-LD's keyword aliasing feature, being able to create links in the, in the graph via nesting or referencing, and a number of internationalization features around how to express data values in different types of languages. So let's look at what some of these features look like in JSON-LD. The first set of features that we're going to look at have to do with typing in JSON-LD. There are two basic types of types in JSON-LD. There are object types, which include things like people and places and events. And there are data types in JSON-LD, which include things like dates and temperatures and integers and floating point values. The first type of uh, typing that we're going to talk about is object typing. This is fairly straightforward. So if you have an object here in JSON-LD, if you want to specify the type of that object to the JSON-LD processor, you just use the at type keyword and you specify the type. Like, for example, this is a person. Typically, this value is expressed in the JSON-LD context, and this value will expand out into a full URL. So this is the way that you give your objects in JSON-LD a very specific type. The other type of typing in JSON-LD is data typing. With data typing, we want to basically associate a data type with a string value. So for example, if we wanted to express somebody's birthday, we would type out their birthday like this and then associate an XSD date with that value. That would tell the JSON-LD processor that this is a date, to, to process this as a date. So this is what it looks like in expanded form. We specify what the value is using the at value keyword in JSON-LD. We specify the data. This is basically January 1st, 2000. And then we specify the type of the data. We're telling the JSON-LD processor that this is a date. Sometimes what we really want to do is just specify the data much more simply, just like we would in JSON. So if we want to specify the data like this, birthday, and just put in the value here, we can use some uh, magic in the JSON-LD context to make that happen. So whenever we specify the term in the JSON-LD context, all we need to do is add an at type value to the term definition. So we say that birthday is always going to be of type XSD date, so that when the developer types this, the JSON-LD processor knows that this value is of type XSD date. Now let's talk a bit about how we build links in the JSON-LD graph. Right? So JSON-LD expresses a graph of information with links between each node in the graph. So for example, this graph is expressing that Natasha knows Boris, and that Boris likes Nikita, and that Sergey is Boris's brother. Right? There are two basic ways to express this graph, to create these links in this graph. The first mechanism is called embedding. So to do embedding in JSON-LD, it's fairly simple. All we need to do is embed one object in another object and tie them together with some kind of relationship. So for example, this outer object is Natasha, and we're going to create a nose relationship with Boris. And the way that we create this link, Natasha knows Boris, is we embed Boris inside the Natasha object. So Natasha knows, this creates the link, Boris, this creates this node over here. The other way to create the link in the graph is to basically just use a URL in, in the place of what we want to link to. So in this case, we say Natasha knows, and we put a URL instead of embedding. This is called referencing in JSON-LD. Now in the context, what has happened is we've said that knows is always going to be associated with a URL. So when the JSON-LD processor comes through, it's going to see knows, it's going to expect a URL to be there, and it's going to create the link like that, Natasha knows Boris. One of the other features that you'll find yourself using fairly often in JSON-LD is the keyword aliasing feature. 
This allows you to basically take the JSON-LD keywords and alias them to something that you like to use a, a bit better. So for example, in JSON-LD we have this add ID and add type keywords. But let's say that you actually want to access these values using standard JavaScript dot notation. Well in JSON-LD you can alias these values to these values. So instead of having to get at your type information like this using the square bracket syntax, you can just use standard JavaScript dot notation to get at it. And here's basically how you do that. All you have to do is create a mapping in the context between the value that you want to alias and the JSON-LD keyword. So if you wanted to use ID instead of add ID, we'd do this line. If we wanted to use type instead of add type, we'd We'd, this, we'd use this line. And if we wanted to use URL, or we had data that was coming in that had both ID and URL, we could alias both and set the JSON-LD uh, uh, ID like that. One of the other really interesting features that JSON-LD has is a full internationalization suite. So that basically means that if you want to express data in a variety of different languages, JSON-LD can do that. So let's, let's take this example. Let's, let's try to express somebody's name. Right? May has a name that's expressed in three different ways. When May expresses her name in English, she expresses it like this. If she wants to express it in Romaji, she expresses it like this. And if she wants to express it in Kanji, she expresses it like this. Right? May's name is Japanese. And we want to be able to say that these strings should be interpreted as Japanese strings. So one way that we can do that is to use the expanded form of language expression in JSON-LD. This is very much like data typing. We specify the value of May, and we say the language is JP. JP stands for Japanese. It's a BCP47 code type. So that's how you express languages in JSON-LD. Now, unfortunately, this is pretty unwieldy, right? We want to have something a bit shorter that we can use. So what we can do, just like in data typing, we can go into the context, specify a new term, and say that whenever that term is used, associate a different type of language with it. So whenever this term is used, we're expressing a schema org name, but we also want to tie a Japanese language to that. So in the body of the JSON-LD document, you use name jaw and you put may in, and the JSON-LD processor will know that this is a Japanese string. You can do the same thing on, uh, for, for this value if it's kanji or manji uh, or English or a variety of different languages. So we've basically covered some of the really useful features in JSON-LD in this tutorial. We've covered object typing and data typing. We've covered JSON-LD keyword aliasing. We've covered nesting and referencing. And we've covered some of the international features in uh, JSON-LD. If you would like to find out more about these features, the specification is actually a pretty good reference. It's fairly uh, accessible. Uh, it's written fairly simply. If you just go to w3.org slash tr slash JSONLD, you can read about all of these features and some of the more specifics of how they work in there. If you'd like to play around with some of these features, there's a JSONLD playground at json-ld.org. If you just go to this site and click on the playground link, you can play around with a lot of the uh, syntax that we've talked about in this tutorial. Thank you for listening and take a look at some of the other JSON-LD tutorials uh, that are online. They'll go into other things like JSON-LD compaction and expansion, uh, what exactly linked data is and why it's important, and a variety of other things that would be of interest to you if you're learning about JSON-LD. This video was made possible by contributions from Educational Testing Service, Accredit Trust, and Digital Bazaar. The video is copyright 2015 by Educational Testing Service and is provided under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Like 4.0 license. This means that you are free to share and modify the content in this video as long as Educational Testing Service is attributed and the same license is used for any derivative works.